Hello and welcome back. Now let's understand one more foundational programming question before we proceed ahead, which will be beneficial for you in this journey. The question which we are going to give solution for is to count number of digits in a number. For an instance, if we have a number in front of us, the number could be maybe 4554. Five, five, four. In this number, how many digits are there? Right now in this number, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, totally four digits example one more example if i have to take here five four three two one how many digits are there inside this number we have one two three four five there are total of five digits inside this number i may have to write program for the same i'll be giving one number and we have to write a program to tell how many digits are there inside that number also remember, whenever you have a problem in front of you, don't directly open the IDE and try to write the program. First, you may have to visualize. First, you may have to analyze and try to write down the steps which you are going to follow in order to give the solution for the problem which you have in front of you. If your steps are clear, then writing the program, writing the solution will become very, very easy. Writing steps which you are going to follow in order to give the solution for your problem is only called as algorithm, step-by-step -step procedure. All the steps which you are going to follow, which will give a solution for the problem which you have in front of us. Now, the first thing is, I may have to create a variable. I may have to create a variable by the name number where actually I'll store the number for which I have to count how many digits are there. The number could be maybe 4554. How many digits are there inside this number? I may have to give solution for it. So I'll be storing that inside a variable called as number. Now, how many digits are there? The digits also I will have to store in a variable for which I'll create one more variable called as count, which will store how many total digits are there inside this number. The initially the value of count will be zero. Fine. Based on number of digits, I may have to write the program and I may have to update this variable count. What is the step I may have to follow? See, for every problem which you have, there could be many solution for it. You may have a different approach. You may follow different steps. You may give different solutions. What I am going to give, that is what I'm trying to explain here. Fine. So whatever solutions I'm writing for the same problem, there can be multiple solutions available. The solution for which I'll be writing the steps are, the first I'll check if there is a really number present inside this variable. Fine. So the first step will be, Checking if number exists, if number exists, really is there is any number here or not, number exists. That is the first step. The second step is I'll be removing the last digit, digit of this number. Now, there are multiple solutions. The solution which I am going to follow here is I'll be going to the last digit of this number. I'll be removing. If I remove the last digit, that moment, I'll increment the value of count. Initially, the value of count is zero. It will become one. Again, I'll come back here. I'll remove this particular digit from the number. Again, I'll increment the value of count to as in when I'm now removing the last digits, if I remove the last two digits, how many digits are left out? Only two digits are left out. Again, I'll go to the last digit, I'll remove and increment the value of count. It will become three. Only one particular number is left out. I'll remove this also and increment the value of count to four. Multiple approaches are there. I'm going to follow this approach. Fine. Removing the last digit and that time I'll update the I'll update or you can say increment value of count by one. As in when you are removing the last digits of the number, I may have to increment the value of count. How to remove the last digit and how to increment programmatically, we will understand. You need not to worry on this. This is the approach. This is the steps I'm going to follow. Increment the value of count. Then all the steps I'll repeat. I'll say here, repeat step one to step three. Step one, two, step three. These steps, I'll be repeating it. That means I may have to check if number exists. Then I'll remove the last digit of the number. Then the resultant I'll store back in a variable and increment the value of count. Again, I'll repeat that. There will be only three numbers left out. I'll remove the last digit. I'll update the number with only two numbers. I'll increment the value of count. 
again i'll repeat this i'll remove the last digit increment the value of count and i'll update the final resultant number again i will repeat the same activity here now how do we remove the last digit of our number if you ask me if i have to tell you the solution for this maybe the number is 4554 if you divide that by 10 the quotient will be 455 five. making sense that means last digit will be automatically removed you may get some precision value, but I'll be storing the result in an integer variable. If an integer variable means whatever precision value will be there, that will be truncated, which you will be knowing in your basic fundamental classes only. Again, this 4, double 5, I will try to divide by 10. Then the quotient which you will be getting here is 45. Again, I'll try to divide 45 by 10. Again, the quotient will be 4. Again, you'll get some decimal value, but I'll be storing the resultant in a integer value. So it will not be storing any of the you no know, decimal point or fractional point or whatever the precision value which we get. We'll be getting only this whole number. Again, if you try to divide 4 by 10, you know very well. If you try to divide any numerator by denominator, the end result is always 0. In that way, I'll be removing all the numbers and as and when i'm removing the numbers from this or as and when i'm going to remove the digits from a number i'll be updating my count if i remove the first digit the last digit immediately i'll update my count to one it will become one zero to one again i'll repeat the activity i will check if there is a number the number will be this the final resultant number will be this again i'll remove this the moment I'm removing this, I'll update it. One will become two. I'll say count plus plus increment and decrement operator in this series. We have already understood. Again, I'll repeat the activity. Now 45, 45 divided by 10. I'll be removing the five. The moment I remove this, I'll update the count. Count plus plus. It will become three. Again, I'll remove this. It will become four. This is the activity or this is how I'm going to give solution for the problem which we have in front of us. So let me write down the program. You will get a better clarity on this since I'm going to take a user input for which I have given the scanner. I've created the object of scanner and I'm going to just write down here. I'll say here, enter the number, any number in that matter. I'll be storing that inside a variable called as number variable. Number equals to, I'll say here, scan is a reference variable dot next int i'm taking the user input and i'll be storing it great after which i'll create a variable here int is a type of count initial value of count is zero now we have discussed one of the loop wherein you need not to specify the update part you need not to in the write the initialization part which is nothing but the while loop as long as fine so the approach for whatever you know steps i'm going to follow the first step is to check if there is a really number exist inside that variable directly by writing the condition i want to proceed further so we do have an option of uh, using the for loop we have an option of using the while loop we have an option of using the do while loop in this case i am going to use the concept of while loop during our fundamental discussion i had told you if you want you can use a while loop without the initialization without the update part directly by writing the condition here I'm repeating all the activities one by one. I'm repeating. Uh, no, I'm removing the last digit which we have inside in you no know, inside the number for which loops comes into picture. But I don't want to use for loop. I want to use the while loop. If you have any ambiguity, please do watch the video of while loop, which is there inside the same playlist. I'm going to say as long as as long as if the number whatever we have is greater than zero. If the number is of course, not here. I would like to go here and say if the number is greater than zero. That means if there is really some number other than zero is present. That's the meaning of it. And I will say here number divided by 10. Divided by 10. If you say number divided by 10, the last digit will be removed. And the total resultant I will store back inside the number. That means I am updating that number here. After updating, immediately I will say here count plus plus count plus plus again at the end i will say system dot out dot println i will say the number of digits in number number of digits in number or maybe i'll say here i would like to just print number r 
I will say, of course, I may have to write within this. I'll say R. I would like to just uh, print whatever count we are getting it. And maybe I'll try to explain again this program in the board also. For now, let me just run and check if I'm getting the desired results. If I just have to run this, you can see here, enter the number is what we are getting. I'll be entering the number here, 4554. Five, four. How many digits are there? Totally four. You can see here, the number of digits in. Okay, initially we have here zero. So what am I doing here? Number of digits in number. All right. Oh, finally, I'm updating the number, right? That is the reason I'm getting this. So number of digits are directly, I would like to print this because the final result of number will be zero, of course, to stop the loop. So let me just run this number of digits are, I would like to just go and say here, stem dot out dot println. I'll enter the number, any number that matter, five, four, five, four, four digits, right? So the number of digits are four, which you can see here. The number of digits are four. You can give any number. Let me just run this program once again. If I have to run this program, you can see here, enter the number. I'll enter some number, any number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I should be getting the answer nine. The number of digits are nine, which you can see here. We are getting the result as nine. That means our program is working fine. How exactly this is happening for which I would like to take this program. I would like to go back to my I know board and I would like to just write down here and try to explain you if there is any ambiguity. You should be in a position to understand if your fundamentals are clear. But however, this is very crucial. I would like to just explain how this logic is working. So my user will enter some number here. It's a end user will enter some number. I'll be storing back inside this number. So inside this number variable, whatever my user is entering, that number will be present. It could be anything. I'll say to three, four, five. For an example, my user has entered this number. Again, you're creating one value here, count equal to zero. That means inside count, it is zero. Fine, please look at the steps which I have written. The first step is checking if the number is exist. I'm checking as long as inside this number, it is greater than zero. So two, three, four, five, is it greater than zero? Yes, it is true. It will go inside this equal to operator right side first. That means number. What is the number here? Two, three, four, five divided by 10 divided by 10 and that you are storing back inside the number. So if you divide this by number, what will be inside this number? Now we'll have two, three, four point something since it is integer. So the precision value will be ignored. Only this much will be stored back. So right now inside the number we have two, three, four count plus plus after removing the last digit i'm telling count plus plus that means the existing value of count will become one again it is a loop right as long as number is greater than zero so two three four is it greater than zero the answer is yes again two three four divided by ten if you divide by ten the result will be only two three so this will be replaced by two and three and the moment you remove this, after this part is over, immediately telling count plus plus, count will become two. Again, loop, right? One more time. You are checking is two, three greater than zero. The answer is yes. Again, it will go back here and you're checking 23 divided by 10. The result will be only two. Decimal fractional value will be truncated and here it will be two. That means two will be stored back inside the number. We don't have 22 now. It is two. And the moment you're removing this, after this line is over, removing the last digit is over, count plus plus, two will become three. Again, you're checking, is two greater than zero? Yes, go inside the loop. Again, two by 10, two by 10 is by default zero, zero will be updated inside the number. So only we were getting zero when you were printing there. So of course here, what will be there? Zero will be present. And the moment you remove this two, you're telling count plus plus. After this line, again, count plus plus. That means this three will become four. Again, you're checking, is number greater than zero? You can see, is number greater than zero? No, it is not zero. It is equal to zero. Loop files, control comes out of the loop and you're telling the number of digits are what is there inside the count, which is four. 
so this approach is one of the easiest approach to give the solution i hope you are able to understand that is the reason we have uh, you know completed some of the fundamentals of loop if else switch case operators in java also some of the pattern programming to get you comfortable with the concept of loops fine so you can rewatch all the fundamental videos if there is any ambiguity and you can always rewatch these videos also in order to understand better these are the foundational programming questions which are very very crucial before we try to give solution for some of the problems we have on the lead code or we have on the hacker rank or any of the coding platform before we understand actual advanced algorithms on and the data structures fine few more foundational questions we will try to solve first and then we will get into the coding platforms